Okay, so we're gonna move on. We have two more 15 minute technique talks just to give you some other quick ideas. Uh, we're gonna start with Eileen. She is going to talk about a game she created called Stump the Professor. And it basically is a playful technique that turns testing upside down and turns it back on to the professor. So I will turn it over to you, Eileen. All right, thank you. Well, I finally have a group that uh, can appreciate my necklace. So I, I thought I'd turn it on just for you for a second, but I don't want to be too distracting. Anyway, um, the the I'm going to share my screen here, hopefully. Um, Eileen, you might want to start your video. We can't see. Oh, I hit it wrong. There, there you we are. go. Oh, oh well, yeah. then I missed the Sorry. necklace. My God, no. <laughs> uh, Love it. <laughs> anyway, um, what I want to do is I'll show you a little bit about um, what we did for this. Now, most of you, how many of you have used Kahoot? I mean, it's kind of like your most rudimentary uh, game that most of the students you probably have are familiar with. Yeah, I see a lot of hands and thumbs up and it's great. It's lots of fun, right? But uh, let's see, is my screen sharing? No, not yet. There we go. I bet that's it. Great. Yep, there you go. All right. So anyway, with the uh, um, with the program, uh, what we do is we, we take Kahoot and completely reverse it around. So what I do is I create a, an extra free account in Kahoot so that the students can create questions to try to stump me so they can get extra credit. So I set up this empty free Kahoot account. The students add questions. They can add one or two questions. And then they put their name on them so I know who wrote them. Then I take the quiz and any questions that I miss, the author gets extra credit points. So then here's how this happens. Um, so they entered the corrections, the questions. Here's a, a hopefully if it'll come up, an example of the um, Kahoot. Let me move here. So here they have their questions. I have a real small class this time. I only have about six students and two of them did it. So we had about 30% obviously uh, uh, participation rate. So Preston asked me this question, Angelica asked me another one. So we had three questions that I was going to answer. So they put them in there. And hey, Eileen. Yes. Um, we are unable to see what you're sharing. Can you re uh, stop sharing this and then reshare the new one? Yeah, let's see here. We got a new share here. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Now, can you see this? Yeah. So these are the questions and they go in and write them. Um, and they can make true, false. They can make what any, any kind of questions. I tell them they can't ask me like page numbers or those kinds of things from the text, but anything that's in our course material for that particular section, they can ask. So they have the chapters that they know will be on an exam. So this, uh, they, they can go from any of the material that we have. So these were the questions that they wrote. Then I go in and I take these questions and I do, let me get this out of the way here. Um, now, can you still see? No, it's back to your slides. Okay, that's great. Um, I've got the, uh, I pr password protected, so it's there for the class. <laughs> then when I take the quiz, I use, I record my screen. I use OBS Studio. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a real easy screen sharing recording uh, program. And I've got the links here on this presentation. I record my screen as I took it. Then I did a little bit of cleanup post edit in Adobe Premiere Rush. If you haven't used this, this is also something you can access free. You can edit right on your phone. So all of these are real easy uh, to get to. I can, um, hopefully, maybe I can show you. I don't know whether it'll go to it or not. But this is the OBS Studio. You just pick your operating system and you can, can use it. And uh, my uh, son kind of set me up with this and it works, like I said, it's real slick, it's real easy to do. So. Enough of this. Um, let me go back. 
So then I posted it as an announcement, this finished video uh, on our learning management system. Here we have world class. I don't know if any of you are uh, a, a D2L, I guess is what you guys would call it. Um, but it is the um, learning management system that we have. And it, um, I posted as an announcement so they could watch me actually playing their, um, and I'll go down here so you can see this. So you can actually see me playing the game. Let's see this. Best laid plans. So here's the announcement that they saw. Hopefully. So there's something, Professor. Let's see if you can play for us. Well, all right, so much for this. All right, let's see how I do with this coat. All right, camera drill is on the same thing. That is not true, I know. All right, well, Preston, you didn't stop me. All right, let's see the next one. What five factors regulate social conduct in public relations? Hmm. This is a tough one. Oh, you stopped reading, Angelica. All right. Good enough. All right. That's a lot to read. Next one. Public relations is a bonding between a blank and public. Business strategy, people, organization, and property. Aren't these going to be those? Well, this one's not happening. I'm going to say those people. Well, you stumped me. All right. So, anyway, congratulations to Angelica and Preston. You have stumped the professor. You will be getting 10 bonus points on our first exam. Congratulations. Okay, so that was what the students saw um, of me taking the uh, Kahoot. And uh, now, in all honesty, I did know the answers to a couple of those. You know how sometimes when you play with kids, um, you sometimes let them uh, have an opportunity to, to win. And so I, I, I maybe did fudge a little bit on that. But uh, and then here are some of the benefits that I think from doing this in reverse, letting them write the questions and you take it as a professor. One, it kind of makes the game more fun. It, it, it lets them see kind of behind the curtain about how those cahoots are developed. They have to engage with the course material because they've got to look up and try to find questions that maybe they can get extra credit points for. In a larger class, you can have the uh, this as a study guide available for students then as they prepare for the, an exam. It also shows that I'm vulnerable, that, you know, it's okay not to know everything. And I think that's an important, you know, thing to model for students. It also models that I'm willing to play. And also because I'm dealing with public relations students, it demonstrates an easy way to do video production. So they, they get to see some of the links and things that I used to help develop that so that when they have to do videos or things in the future, they have access to those tools and they've seen them used. Um, here's my contact information if you have any questions or, or, or want to talk about it more. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I think that, um, you know, it, this is just kind of a, a fun way to use Kahoot in a little bit different way. And the students really do seem to like it. And it is kind of fun if you can stump the professor. Thank you. I love that idea. There's a couple of questions in the chat. One was, 
do you then end up using any of these questions on the quote unquote real exams? If they're, you know, ones that are okay enough, like that last question was a little confusing because they had groups of people in an organization, really either of those answers could have been right. Um, and I purposely picked the wrong one, but that wouldn't necessarily be a good test question. So if the question is one that I can adapt or that can be used, yeah, I have used them on test questions. So they, they get a little bonus there too. Okay. Um, another one is how long are quizzes typically? Um, typically what we do with the actual the exam in this particular class, it's an introductory class that I use it in. It's the very first one they take. So there's lots of, it's all online. And so I usually give them an open book exam that's about an hour long. So it'll have 50 questions on it. And uh, like I said, some of these will be appearing if they're good enough that, or that I can adapt it so that they're not confusing uh, on the actual exam. And then I think one more question, maybe not really a real question, but more for fun from David. How do the students feel about you getting answers wrong? I think they like it. You know, I think it shows that, you know, if you don't have the information right in front of you, you may not remember everything. I think I, you know, I, you know, I guess there's always that chance that, oh, they think less of you because, oh, you should know everything. You're the professor, but I think it's okay. I think we need to, you know, maybe get over ourselves a little bit and mm -hmm. let them know that, yes, there are, you don't have to have absolutely everything memorized in a society where you're a click away from the Library of Congress, you know? So I think that, uh, you know, realizing that everything doesn't have to be memorized, you just really know how to find information in this kind of information age is important. And so I think that models that. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Um, one last question looks like, how many Kahoot questions do you get from students? I, I usually get at least one or two from about half the class, you know, there, there's sometimes there's more, sometimes the whole class really gets behind it and does it. Um, since this is their very first time, I, and I haven't tried this yet, I want to try it again in a subsequent class because they've been exposed to it already, and I might have even greater participation. So that's my next step experiment is do they, once they get a little more familiar with it, uh, want to do it more. And like I said, I do it as extra credit. I don't make it an an assignment because I think it's just more fun uh, mm -hmm. if, if you can do it for extra credit. And I think it's fun actually seeing me take the Kahoot versus me just saying, oh, well, this person and that person stumped me. So yeah. I think that's fun. I agree. I, I loved that part that you send them the video of you taking it. I think that's brilliant. And I think, like you said, it reduces that hierarchy that we often have with faculty and students. And then I think when they feel that hierarchy, they're not as comfortable in the classroom that are not as comfortable, you know, sharing their own ideas. So I really think this is an amazing idea. Well, and you know, I, one of my favorite uh, uh, quotes is, is from the Robinsons, that idea of failing faster. And so I think this also kind of models that a little bit. It, and it's okay if we make mistakes, but we keep moving forward then we just are learning more and gaining more. And I think that's an important thing that this also shows, maybe not explicitly, but at least implicitly to students. Right, reduce that uh, tendency to be perfectionists and not be growth mindset. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eileen. Thank really you.